my topic for today's discussion is regarding stress echocardiography that is exercise echocardiography and how exactly it is different from an exercise treadmill test what are the advantages of doing a stress echo what are the information which it provides what are the indications and contraindications of doing a stress echocardiography and which are the patients where it should be preferred the topic is going to be clinically useful and interesting for all my audience so i would request you to uh, see the topic till the end so coming back to the topic my topic is regarding stress echocardiography basically what is echocardiography echocardiography is basically the ultrasound examination of the heart wherein we put a transducer which emits ultrasound signals and the ultrasound signals are transmitted to the heart and are reflected back by the muscles of the heart when the transducer receives back the signal he, the difference in the intensity of the signals is interpreted by the machine and the uh, image is digitalized by the machine it gives us a picture of the heart and this picture uh, based on this picture we can gather a lot of information in terms of the functioning of the heart the functioning of the valves the condition of the blood vessels the condition of the uh, leakage of the valves or stenosis of the valves a lot of information uh, thickness of the heart uh, muscle tissue a lot of information can be given by the echocardiography be basically it is the single most important tool when it comes to cardiac evaluation and almost each and every patient who is having a detailed cardiac evaluation ideally should undergo an echocardiography now what is stress echocardiography that is the topic for today's discussion basically uh, there are two types of stress test uh, the stress test is required to know the uh, situation of the blood vessels because normal blood vessels if at all they are supplying some amount of blood to the heart the pump function of the heart is usually good in resting condition and the heart will not show some wall motion abnormalities or uh, some area of hypocontractility if at all the blood supply is adequate to maintain the resting condition of the heart uh, in simple language i would mean that basically the heart if at all it is supplying maybe even 10 to 20 percent of the blood if the blood supply is sufficient for the heart in a resting state then all the chambers of the heart all the chambers of the heart and all the segments of the heart would be contracting properly but if at all when the person is made to exert the blood supply or uh, the demand for the blood supply will increase so because the heart also is working more so it will require more amount of blood if more amount of blood is required but the heart uh, blood vessels are so narrowed down that they are not capable of supplying the extra blood supply or extra blood uh, which is required for the oxygen and glucose of that area uh, then the area will start to behave in an abnormal way if the area is does not get an adequate blood supply then the area will become hypocontractile and that area will not be able to function in a proper way and that will be seen on the echocardiography as a regional wall motion abnormality that means a one specific reason of the heart is not functioning properly and that is because of the stress related to the exercise which has lost uh, led to a decrease of the blood supply of that particular area and the hypoxia of that area is causing that segment to be hypocontractile or not contract properly which is leading to difference in the echo image so this is the basic concept of an echocardiography uh, which is done after a stress similar to that much easier than that is the extra is ecg wherein we make the patient to walk on a treadmill and the continuous the ecg comes and based on the pattern change of the ecg from a normal levels to a exercise levels and the recovery pattern of the ecg we can assess whether the patient is having a coronary artery disease or a blockage in the blood vessels or not but this stress echo or stress ecg can only predict or detect critical or very bad coronary artery disease beyond 70 to 80 uh, percent stenosis can only be picked up lesions less than 70 percent may less likely be picked up on a uh, stress echo or stress ecg the predictive value of a stress tmt or exercise ecg is lesser than stress echo uh, the predictive value of a tmt test or a treadmill test is 70 percent while a stress echocardiography is a uh, has a predictive value of 75 to 80 percent but it is not a hundred percent sure shot test and on the basis of this test you cannot be hundred percent confident that the patient is having a blockage or not it will give just give you an assessment of the fact that uh, the patient is likely to have a blockage and based on this information you can decide whether the patient requires an angiography which is the only single most and the only confirmatory test which will give, give us a hundred percent sure evidence that the patient is having a blockage or not and whether the patient requires treatment or not but stress echo will give us at least uh, based uh, on the information which it provides and it at least gives us some idea whether the uh, SL is having a significant blockage or not and whether we require an angio or not the difference in stress echo and ecg is that in stress ecg we only perform the ecg of the patients while the patient is continuously exercising while in a stress echo we continuously perform a echo of the patient we see a pre-procedure echo that is before the patient is made to walk on a treadmill we do an echocardiography of the patient and after the patient uh, finishes the exercise as soon as the patient is made to line of table we again do a repeat echo it is extremely important that the repeat echo which is done after the procedure is done exactly 
uh, as soon as the patient is made to lie because the wall motion abnormality or hypoxia which is developed by the exercise the effect will disappear within one to two minutes so if at all you are slow in your activities and you make the patient lie down on the bed before you do a echo if that is very slow then there are very high chances that if at all there was any wall motion abnormality that would disappear by the time you uh, get the patient on the bed to do an echocardiography one thing is very important that while the patient is exercising you cannot do an echo because it is extremely inconvenient that the patient is walking or running and you are putting a probe at the chest the image's quality will not be good so to do an echo we have to get the patient on the bed and if at all you waste too much of time in getting the patient on the echocardiographic table or the bed just before uh, just after the patient finishes the exercise then the effect of the exercise muscle tissue might be lost and you will uh, not pick up if uh, just minute changes which are there on the echo uh, that is why it is extremely important to do a pre treadmill echo and a post treadmill echo just after the patient finishes the treadmill within the first 30 to 45 seconds of the performing uh, exercise it is recorded in multiple views uh, in multiple positions the echocardiographic images are recorded and compared to the pre procedure echo to see whether there is uh, increase in the pump function which is a normal phenomena because after the exercise the normal ejection fraction of the heart is improved but if there is no increase in the ejection fraction and sub segmental areas are not contracting properly or the valves are developing regurgitation or the pulmonary artery pressures are increasing or the inferior vena cava gets dilated these are the factors which suggest that the patient is having a significant disease and patient is likely to require a procedure or an angiography in future for valve evaluation also and for decision of surgery also we can use a stress echo uh, if for valvular heart disease patients also because if at all a patient is having a significant valvular problem but we do not know whether the patient will require a valve surgery or not we can ask the patient to get a stress echo done we do a pre procedure echo see for the valve gradients and the pressures and then after exercise or treadmill we again do a repeat uh, echo for the patient and assess the difference of the parameters if at all there is a significant difference that will suggest that the patient is having a very low stamina and low very low effort threshold and very high chances that the patient is likely to require surgery in future the precautions i have already discussed that you have to be quick in your performing an echo and there are the problem with the stress echo that sometimes there will be subjective variation which uh, if at all the interpreter is not recorded it on a cd it cannot be uh, confirmed by another operator the cardiologist has to be always be at the side of the patient and he has to himself record the echo while uh, tmt is much more simpler because it gives you a printed image you can uh, even if the cardiologist is not available at that point of time later on the image evaluation can be done by the cardiologist so convenience wise treadmill test is much better because it is much more convenient for the doctor to perform it uh, results wise stress echo is better but the difference is only 5% so it's not a huge image uh, huge difference in the uh, reproductivity or the predictive value of the uh, test but it at least gives you some advantage over a treadmill test so as far as possible uh, we should always do a stress echo if at all it is technically feasible to get it done but uh, everything will depend on the quality of the echocardiography which is done before and after the procedure so technical limitation in performing a stress echo is comparatively more cost is slightly on the higher side uh because stress tm treadmill test will cost something in between 1200 to 1500 and a stress uh, echo cardiography will be a uh, collection of echo and treadmill board test so the cost will be around 3000 to 3500 to the patient so cost will be on the higher side uh image interpretation will be better with a stress echo uh, but only thing is that the cardiologist has to be available at the bedside and the machine uh, echo machine has to be there just beside the patient before and after the procedure and uh, that makes it slightly difficult to manage the details that is why majority of the cardiologists do tend to prefer a uh, treadmill test and if at all a problem is there or some uh, issues are there then they can subsequently again perform a stress echo or they can get it confirmed by means of a angiography or a ct angiography because these days ct angio and regular angio are so easily available that people do not want a very costly and very cumbersome screening test for their patients uh in this topic i have tried to discuss what is the difference between a stress echo and a stress test treadmill why majority of the uh, cardiologists majority of the doctors are routinely doing a stress treadmill rather than a stress echo the predictive value and the image uh, the efficacy or the specificity of a uh, stress echo is better as compared to treadmill so if at all possible it is always wiser to do a stress echo but only this thing is that sometimes the logistic concerns are there and it sometimes it becomes inconvenient for the cardiologist to do that is why majority of the times people tend to just perform a treadmill test and in case of a doubtful case then they can subsequently confirm it with a stress echo or with a angiography as what is feasible for the patient 
the purpose of my channel is i wish to make scientifically correct and practical problems and practical issues and solutions uh, i want to make it easily available for the masses in layman's language so that people can understand and manage the patients well they can discuss things better with their doctor if at all they have a good understanding of the disease uh, usually for this amount of information people tend to depend on their doctors and their friends and relatives doctors because of time constraint may or may not be able to give all the information to you and friends and relatives sometimes give you a partially correct information following which might be sometimes be detrimental to your patients and the patient actually might be troubled or harmed if at all you follow a half or a partially correct information so i wish that this scientifically correct information is easily available to you if at all you like the concept of my channel please subscribe to my channel please like the videos if you feel that the content is useful for your friends and relatives please share the link with your friends and if you feel that in future we should cover up more topics or if you have some uh, queries regarding to this topic you can discuss with uh, us on the, our channel and we'll be happy to answer to your queries and sort out your questions and in future also if some other topics you want us to be covered on our channel we'll be happy to take up those videos so this is dr navin agrawal and i'm signing off saying a big thanks to you that you have been a good audience listening to the topic completely and i hope the topic was clinically and practically useful to all of you if it even if you have some queries you feel free to ask the people who are new to my channel i would request them to subscribe to my channel as this gives us a lot of inspiration and motivation to keep up the good work as we are doing now